Welcome to part four on critical thinking, analysis and materials to combat climate change. Let's talk about uranium and the nuclear age. Has our time come to recognize the science behind the safest and cleanest energy? It seems like, you know, one of the greatest movements has been the Democrats have usually not liked nuclear, but the Biden administration has come around. They seem to be on board. They're taking active steps. Yeah. Uh, this is a huge, uh, and for someone like myself, and I'm, I'm, I mean, you've been in this for, <laughs> for a long time, it must be frustrating to have the conversations, to see where we need to go and think, why are we not taking steps? Why is this bill not being pushed through? Why are we not doing yep. this? We've been talking about it for 12 years or 10 years or, or however long. We're, we're starting to see it now, but this nuclear, it can, uh, how much do you think just random off the top of your head, if we really pursued nuclear and it takes us say seven to 10 years to, to, to incorporate on a, a decent, I'm not even talking significant, what chunk of that 39 billion or 36.3 billion could we, could we possibly well, take out? <laughs> Actually, Andrew, I was I was trying to figure out a way to get from from where we were to, to this answer. Um, okay. I mean, I've, I've done these numbers and I'm not talking about the rest of the world. Like. The United States has done. An admirable job. I'm trying to think of a way to, to phrase this. It doesn't it doesn't sound snarky or or, you know, or dismissive. They've done an admirable job reducing carbon emissions in the United States. Uh, by accident, they they in effect switched to from coal to natural gas for a significant amount of energy generation in the United States. But they did it because natural gas was far cheaper. It's the it's the byproduct of fracking. You know, they were seeking oil, petroleum for for conversion into into fuels that we can use to run vehicles on the street. And natural gas was a natural byproduct of that. And they had more than enough of it. So this pushed the price of natural gas down dramatically. It became cheaper to generate electricity burning that than it was to dig coal out of the ground for that specific purpose and burn coal. Natural gas happens to be a little bit of carbon and a lot of hydrogen. So in effect, you're burning hydrogen and you produce about half of the amount of carbon dioxide emissions that you would by burning coal alone. Great. But frankly, if it turned out that natural gas was some kind of super carbon emitter, and it might be because, you know, in the end of the day, methane is a really good greenhouse gas, and we're not really sure how much methane is ending up in the air and causing problems in, in this climate change vein as well. But even if the natural gas itself were emitting three times as much carbon dioxide as coal, I don't think it would have mattered because it's cheaper. So yeah. the United States would have gone in that direction anyway. All that said, there are countries out there like China that produce a dramatic amount of their electricity burning coal. They don't have the natural gas reserves to, to be able to convert to using natural gas. And so if you staged a program to convert a significant amount of the plants in China, um, take those carbon plants, uh, those, those coal burning carbon fired plant, uh, carbon emitting plants offline and replace them with nuclear, I think you could move towards a 10 or 15% reduction in global carbon emissions. So that's 10 or 15% of the total simply by addressing those those few plants in oh. China, in India, and the few remaining in the United States. That's a huge, that's a huge chunk. That's, right a, there. Huge, that's a huge chunk. Whereas yeah. if we look at something like one of the Biden government's favorite little bugaboos and one of our favorites in Canada, we're going to sell nothing but purely electric vehicles by some date in the future yeah. that some other government might change because yes. you know they will. Um, if you look at vehicles, well, let's look at transportation generally worldwide. You mentioned earlier, the 2021 figure for carbon emissions was something around 36 billion tons yeah. of CO2 equivalent, about only 15% estimates vary, but 14 to 17%, let's say of all those emissions come from transportation. But that transportation isn't just the passenger vehicle that you and I drive around the road. 
it's rail, it's yeah. air, it's shipping, it's light, medium, heavy duty vehicles. In a lot of those circumstances, you're never going to be able to displace an energy dense liquid fuel like diesel from use. Yeah. And remember, we're burning gasoline, we're burning diesel, we're already burning hydrocarbons. A significant chunk of the energy you're producing is actually coming from the production of water, mm. combining hydrogen with oxygen mm. in the air. Yeah. So you're not emitting anything like the level that you would if vehicles use, say, coal as a fuel. <laughs> Regardless of that, they are an emitter, but getting that down to zero is not only unlikely, not only going to take a long time, it's probably impossible. Yes. I, so, you can maybe you tell know. me if I'm wrong, is that I, I remember reading, I think it was The Economist, and it was saying the 15 of the transportation tankers that have that use bunker fuel, their yeah. emissions would account for roughly all the cars in Canada. It was something like right. that, or it was such a, right. a, 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 a massive reaction. You go, wait, what? So part of your brain yeah. goes, well, why are we bothering with the car thing? <laughs> so you can understand well, as a human being, they go, well, I throw my hands up because this is all BS. You go, no, 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 no. You know, it's 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 more information, and it seems overwhelmed to someone, but it isn't. Uh, but it does show there are certain areas where we certainly need to focus on, right? And, and and harness quicker than others. But it's okay. The way I look at say the car is the North American economy really runs on cars. If you can convince the public oh, yeah. that Absolutely. the car thing, then we can go ahead and shift the economy that way. If you have no pull, if they say hands down, no, we won't do the car thing. We won't go electric. Then you go, okay, we've got a real problem now. But right. since they have adopted it, that's a huge step uh, mentally and also economically to go, we can now shift. Uh, it it yeah. isn't like people would think, you know, you'd think, oh, we have to get the the, the base load and the infrastructure fixed first and we'll no. end up with the cars later. That sounds logical, but that isn't realistic how humans work or how we think or how our economy no. works. It's, it's not. And, and again, you have to put, I think, the mistake that a lot of the activists make, apart from being really, really annoying. I mean, I, I cannot stand these people that are, are running around gluing their hands to works of oh. art and saying we're doing something. Yeah. No, you're not. You're just annoying. You're just yeah. loud. Come up with a plan, yeah. you know, and we'll discuss the plan. But gluing yourself to an artwork is not a plan to reduce carbon emissions. And no. I don't know what that's supposed to do. Yeah. The the problem that I have with with the vehicle, the vehicle fixation in a lot of this is we again, we made perfection the enemy of improvement. Yeah. So these vehicles emit a lot of carbon dioxide, granted. Everybody would like them to emit none, granted. But there's two little problems. The first is a critical material issue. If yes. you want every vehicle to contain a 100 kilowatt hour lithium battery, we are going to need so much lithium that our present supply pales by comparison. And we're already at $80,000 lithium. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we're in a material shortage of lithium right now. The price wouldn't be $80,000 if we weren't in a shortage. So the question for governments isn't how do we get more lithium out of the ground and, and convert all the cars? The question should be, that obviously is going to take some time. What should we do with the lithium we have to make the biggest difference now? Yes. And the answer to that seems to be, and it's, it's, it's an answer that's being pursued most aggressively by a few Japanese companies like Toyota and also by a few companies in China.